Hey, welcome back to Ryan Flies, where we're building a home-built aircraft right here in my garage. We recently finished up the horizontal stabilizer, um, these two pieces here that are joined, and I've got that stored away. Today we're breaking into the vertical stabilizer, this piece sticking up here. And the construction is much the same, very similar. There are obviously some significant differences. Um, with that, we'll get started. Now, one thing that I did notice early on, and I've already started to correct, this thing's got a massive bow to it. I don't know if you can see it here. Um, it's not as massive now. It's about twice that bad. But uh, I, I believe this is one of the parts that we have to wing. You'll, you'll see what I mean in a second. I'll put it up on screen. Uh, this part into submission in order to get it straight. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and correct that bow so that when we clico it to this other piece, um, it, it lays flat. I usually start deburring on the bench grinder with the scotch right wheel. It's really the easiest way to get the long straight edges and, and all the big parts out of the way. Once I've gotten everything I can with the bench grinder and scotch bright wheel, I'll switch over to the Dremel tool and deburr bits. These will allow me to get into inside corners and tight areas. I'll do everything I can before switching over to some detailed jeweler's files. These will get the remaining pieces that I was unable to get with the Dremel tool or the bench grinder. Some pieces like this rib here have a curve that was imparted on them when forming. What I'm doing is called fluting with a special pair of pliers to pucker the edge and that pulls in the opposite direction of that curve that was formed back at the factory. Once we get it straight, we can then clico it back to the structure. This is the structure, the skeleton, of the vertical stabilizer, which will, when my ceiling's tall enough, obviously sit vertically. 
Uh, if you're thinking that went together quite quickly, you're not wrong. Um, I've only been down here for a few hours and I've got this all bolted up. Now remember, I've barely started deburring. Everything needs to be gone over again. Um, and we, we build these things and then take them apart and build them and take them apart quite a few times before the end result. So left to do uh, to start, we're going to match drill all of these. So re-drilling each hole. Um, again, finishing deburring. Uh, I'm sure there's a number of hardware parts that are going to go on here. Then we got to break everything down, final deburring, cleaning, priming. Then we start to put it all back together. Um, so let's see how that goes. Drilling's done. MVP of the day is the pneumatic Clico Polar. I think it really saves your wrists. Uh, the next step is a little deceiving. It's it's about 14 steps wrapped up into one. Um, we'll be dimpling this, we'll be deburring as I mentioned. There's some countersinking and we'll get into that um, that I need to do. And then it all goes into the prime booth. So I'm going to get out the old dimple source Rex and get started on this. That should be pretty quick. And we'll see what we want to pick next. Skin is dimpled, so I'll put away the Dimple Master 5000 and uh, get out the squeezer and start dimpling the structure. Uh, being careful not to dimple anything that should be countersunk or vice versa. this contraption at the end of my table but some spots are too small for the squeezer to get into so you got to do these hammered dimples they're like my least favorite uh, the dimple matic's pretty easy the squeezer's pretty great this is this is sort of a joke but it works kind of
countersink these holes, uh, I have a micro stop here. Uh, it's going to stop us exactly where we need to uh, to make sure the, the dimples fit in the holes and, and the rivets are tight and secure. The way we get it set up is to first set it up so there's a um, flush rivet. So I've already got that sort of by luck, um, but I set it so that we put a countersink in there and then that rivet is exactly flush. And then what we're gonna do is back it off about seven one thousandths of an inch um, to, to allow the dimple from the other material to nestle in there. Just so happens each click on this thing is one one thousandth of an inch. So I'm just gonna count seven backwards. Now it's sitting just ever so slightly below the surface, as you can see by that little, hopefully, silver ring around there. back up where I left off. It seems like there's only a few parts that I had noted left to deburr. I'll get those wrapped up pretty quick here. Uh, and then I think we're going to get straight into uh, pre-coat and scrubbing them and then get them into the priming booth. and in the booth. The reason I do it that way is to try and economize on space. I get the skin in there, I get all these parts ready but out here, and then halfway through priming I swap, uh, simply because there's not enough room for everything all at once. communication and narration came across as almost complaining um, and I, I didn't want that to, to be left untouched. Now granted I'm a, I'm a complainer by nature uh, it's, it's one of my favorite hobbies second only to, to aircraft and aviation um, but it's it's really sort of meant in humor and, and in jest it's it's not lost on me uh, a, what an incredible project this is and, and how fortunate I am 
to be able to take it on um, and be uh, just how fun and and, and um, engaging of an activity this is. It's not all just just dreary as I sometimes pointed out to be. It's not all tedious. Um, it really is a lot of fun. And I wanted to make sure that everybody out there knew um, I am, I consider myself quite blessed to be scrubbing the ever-living shit out of aluminum uh, and bolting it together for hours on end. Um, it really is a lot of fun. And if, if anybody out there is thinking about possibly jumping in, don't let my complaints stop you. Uh, this is a very, very rewarding activity. in one video but we're already bumping up against 20 minutes and uh, people just don't have attention spans these days so I'll make you a deal if you like and subscribe I'll be back with the remainder of the vertical stabilizer next week at the latest thanks and thanks for watching Ryan Fleiss